guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're finally gonna get on with doing some work on one of the vehicles. Not one of the cars, but my motorbike. The reason for that, as you've probably seen in the thumbnail, is that I need to practice like my body work and start figuring out how to do painting. And I know that there is an incredible amount of work that we need to do to get up to a stand where I can then start taking that onto the Carmen gear, the GT6, and doing other things that I wanna do. So I thought it'd be super fun to start on something small, like the CX500 that has been sat here in my office for basically the best part of four years. And the bike is beautiful, it was great. Unfortunately, literally the day that I picked it up, I dropped it on its side and put a dent in the side. But hey, the silver lining is I now get to learn how to fix that, whether it is pushing out the dent. I'm sure we're gonna use some filler, but I need to make sure that I do that the best way so that we get a really good finish. And we'll learn on that process. I'm not gonna hide anything from you guys. I'm a complete beginner when it comes to bodywork. All I have done so far is just spend some time on YouTube looking at processes and let's just go through those together. So here's my CX500 that I've had for about four, three or four years now. Um, to be honest, it's been mostly a paperweight, but with me starting to learn or want to learn these new techniques with bodywork and paint and a few other things, I think it really is the perfect vehicle to be able to do those things on a smaller scale and if I screw up at least it's only going to be one bit of metal at a time rather than doing a panel on the car and then worrying if I'm going to be able to match it again. So the tank's already off, the plan is to respray the tank, learn bodywork, respray the back fender, but for now let's jump on the bench with the tank and the rear fender and see what we can learn. So step one with the tank is stripping it down. That's the first thing we're gonna do. We've got some plastics on here that are all original. I wanna make sure that we look after those. Um, you've also got the fuel filler cap underneath, a little bit of wire from the locking mechanism, and the Honda badges, which I'd kinda of like to figure out if we can do something good with as well. Once we've done that, we'll get these rubbers off underneath the tank. It's all looking Fairly good under it. Oh, that's interesting. It looks like it was this awesome kind of blue color at one point. Well, that won't be coming back. But yeah, we'll get it stripped and then we'll get it stripped. For obvious reasons, I am gonna keep my camera as far away as possible because I don't want to destroy a lens. But the tank is ready to be stripped. I've got my full face mask that I'm gonna be using today with that uh, knotted wire wheel. Let's see how this goes. super interesting so but it's really attacking that paintwork and I'm super impressed this shouldn't take too long what a crazy difference that has made so I used a knotted wire brush and this thing is brutal but what I didn't really fully appreciate is how dusty it would get in here I'm kind of I'm all right but let me show you the results so here is our tank after Probably 40 minutes of going to work on it and let me just get back a bit, there you go. It's, that's amazing, right? Um, I think I'm gonna use a little bit of paint stripper on the top and there's a small dent here on the front now. Again, part of me would think, oh, let's try and push that out from the inside and if I can reach it, maybe. But truthfully, it will also be good for me to practice like body filler and how it works and that's kind of a good little size I can do that on. So I can do that, and then we've got the other dent on the back here, so this is where I dropped it, and yeah, that shouldn't really take a lot to sort out, and I can start just prepping this for pain. I also have the rear fender, so this rear fender, rear mudguard, I don't know what you'd call it. So basically this was on the bike. I've done exactly the same thing. I've stripped it back, but it's got all of these holes on it. And some of them like these two, I want to keep, but other ones I don't. And what I'm going to do now is get on the welder and see if I can fill them in. Again, I've only welded once. It might have been the Land Rover for chassis, but I have only uh, welded once. And this is much thinner material. So I'm going to have a go at filling these holes in. 
So that look right there, that's me realizing there's no gas in my welder and that's the reason why it's spitting so badly. But because I'm on video, I figured I'd carry on cracking on and hope none of you would realize. Now we've stripped the tank, we've stripped the rear mud guard. We've put on some pretty terrible weld, but we've managed to close up all those holes on that rear mud guard as well. And yeah, that'll mean tomorrow when we come back, hopefully we can start grinding that back, giving ourselves some half decent flat surfaces to work off to start prepping for paint. So after quitting for the evening, I realized about an hour later that the body filler might take a while to set. So I came down in the middle of the night, laid on some body filler, and let's get back to the next day when that had set. So I've never actually worked with car body filler and literally the first time doing this and kind of seeing how it works, I'm, I know I'm gonna to have to put another coat over the top. I've gone a bit too deep in places. I can also see where I haven't pushed out my air bubbles and that's obviously super important to make sure we get a good finish. So what I'm trying to kind of do on this front corner is there was an actual like little dent in there. So because it's on a curve, I'm trying to work the sides a little bit and get that shape back and it's going all right. Round two of getting some filler on here and there's quite a lot of pink in there, I'll be honest. As I'm sanding this, I'm kind of seeing where I've gone wrong. I've been too kind of belligerent with it. So there's quite a bit of a contamination in the filler and I'm still worried even with this second coat, it's not gonna be good enough to get maybe like a, a, a good primer on after we've done this. So we'll see how it goes. Maybe I'll rescue it. Maybe I've learned something, which is if you're gonna do it, do it properly first time. Cause there's absolutely no reason in doing this bodywork to a shit standard. Um, Cause it's just gonna th show through in the paintwork that we do. So I'll have a look. Be patient. This is the point I think a lot of us go wrong and where it's kind of that fuck it moment. Whereas I really want to just get this done, not perf perfect, but like to a good enough standard that I'm happy with it. I don't want to be staring at a point on this tank that just looks wrong. So let's see how it goes. Whatever step you're at, when you think that you're done, you're not even halfway there. Um, I've ground back a lot of the holes that I welded in and they're looking good but we're definitely gonna need some body filler on this, especially if anyone can tell me what that is. Can you see that? It's like, a, it's like a gold in the middle of the metal. I think some sort of metal filler might have been used or metal bar maybe. So I definitely lost a few hours to sanding this tank and the rear fender. If you've never done body work before, I would say that this is where you will spend most of your time when you're prepping for paint. If you don't spend time doing this and getting it correct at this stage, any mistakes that you make or anywhere that you just decide to get a little bit lazy, it's really gonna show through in your primer and then your final coat. So we've just used some panel wipe. Um, again, had this for years. It's been sitting in one of my boxes because I've wanted to do body work and kind of learn a bit of spray for a really long time. I think, the problem is, it's, it's, it's to get it right and to do it really well, you've got to be a professional. You know, it takes years of training to understand how this works properly. And, and if you're one of those guys watching this, or girls watching this, then I'm not trying to em emulate you in any way, shape or form. I'm, I'm just very keen to learn more about the process. And by doing that, it might mean I can do a bit more of my own work, I'll get better, but it also means if I ever come and see one of you guys that I really respect what you do a little bit more and I'll be able to ask a few more questions about the process. So it's a win-win-win really. At this stage, I didn't really appreciate how much a sterile room would make a difference to spray painting and the fact that I'd been sanding and taking all that old paint off in this same room is something I was gonna learn about a little bit further down the line. 
the things I'm learning so far is that the primer really does pull out all the imperfections and I forgot I've gone and got myself some better quality filler so we're going to go over with that stuff a bit tomorrow and there's some little holes there's an extra dents that I had no idea about and again when this was just bare metal you don't really notice these things now as I look around the tank yeah a little dent there where the filler's gone on this side there's some lines that just aren't working they're a bit too harsh so the next day I ended up going to the car supplies shop and I picked up some better body filler. The, the body filler that we'd put on just wasn't cutting it. It had too many imperfections in and I wasn't happy with it. After we'd done that, I ended up sanding back the body filler as well as that first layer of primer. And that's what you can see me bringing out here. Yeah, absolutely what I've learned this time around that I won't do on the final coat is to rush that. I'll let each coat kind of flash off for 20 minutes but before I come back and just carry on applying it gently. But I'm really, really happy. Like there are, this was the area that was really badly damaged and that's now looking really good. It, there wasn't enough coverage on the white to fully cover everything as well. So we finally got to the stage of getting our color laid down. And when it came to choosing the color, there really wasn't much choice. It was what I had lying around. There are loads of bottles of spray paint all over my hotel. And this was actually a color match I got from the old VW Crafter that I did up a few years ago. So it's a Mercedes blue gray that we're spraying down here. Um, as a first coat and as we laid it down I was quite light with it I just dusted it to start with and then after that we slowly built up the layers at this stage I didn't really know what to expect from the final finish of laying down my color and as you'll see in the last couple of shots here the the paint didn't really lay down glossy at all and at that stage I was a little bit concerned about that but I also knew it was something we could work on once it had completely dried so after 24 hours we were able to come back and work on the tank once it was cured the first thing that I did was spray it down with water and use a wet and dry sandpaper starting with an 800 grit and working my way all the way up to a 2500 grit. This essentially removed a lot of the bigger imperfections that were within the paintwork that I could get rid of and then after that I was able to use a compound which is a G3 to do its final polish. If you'd asked me how long I thought this project was gonna take me, I don't think I would have guessed it would have taken me the best part of a week. Um, I knew there were gonna be mistakes along the way and that was the whole reason that I picked a bike tank over doing one of the panels on my car. I didn't wanna get down the line and realize that I'd screwed the door up or I hadn't matched the paint or a thousand other things that I didn't even know I didn't know and uh, basically not be able to fix it. So the tank was a really good starting point for me. As well as that, the tank was dented, the tank was a bit rusty, the tank was just messy and it didn't present very well. So I really had nothing to lose. Am I happy with the finished results on this tank? Absolutely, they're not perfect, but considering I have used spray paints including cellulose that have been sat around this house for the best part of three years and really kind of worked with things that again that I've just bought and never really had any idea how to use the final result as a result for a first time is fantastic I think one of the things that I was fortunate about coming into this project is I spent a very very long time over the last few years looking at how other people spray and things they do and when it came into doing this, I was very conscious of that. So like dusting my first coat on my color or spending the extra time to really get the metal work kind of sorted out and the body filler sanded, getting the contours to work properly. All of those things took hours and hours and hours. And that's why this video has taken so long. It, it's partly because I didn't know what I was doing, but it's mostly because 
There's a reason why you pay a lot of money for bodywork, and it just takes hours of manual labor. You have to sit there with sandpaper and polishers and a thousand other things and keep, keep going over what you're gonna do to get a good result. If like me, you've never done this before and you wanna do it for a first time, be prepared to be patient. That's all I can say. And be prepared for things to go wrong. Um, this tank certainly isn't perfect. There's lots of imperfections on it, but I have learned so much through this process that the next thing that I do or the next thing I paint, I will take those lessons with me. For instance, the amount of dust that is caused by um, spraying, by sanding, by taking paint off in the first place on a part if you are gonna recondition something is absolutely phenomenal. And I didn't re really appreciate that. So if you are planning on doing something like this, don't do it in an area where you have your best computer or your sitting room of like what, like it's, it's just, it doesn't lend itself to nice places. Wait till the summertime or get a dedicated space or get a spray booth or build a spray booth and you'll find you get even better results. Now that the tank's finished, there are a couple of other things I've been dying to learn. So the next thing that we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be doing some carbon fiber skinning. Something else I've never done before, but I follow the uh, Easy Composites, Carbon Composites YouTube channel absolutely fantastic on that content i'll try and link it if i remember and that's the next thing we're going to do so i want to start creating my own carbon fiber parts but an easy way into that process is going to be doing carbon fiber skinning so if you've enjoyed this video if you're liking the content if you're not liking the content drop me a comment let comment let me know why but if you are please subscribe like this video and I will catch you next time with something a bit different.